Hey, Mike here. So today I wanted to look at the AWS controllers for Kubernetes, and I wanted to raise the question, if you're deploying applications, should you be using Terraform to outline and deploy the resources that the application needs? Think SQS queues, SNS topics, RDS instances, S3 buckets, or if you're running Kubernetes, should you be using controllers? So AWS actually provide these controllers for Kubernetes that let you interface with various AWS services. And I was wondering who amongst you trusts developers to run and use these controllers. So I believe that you should use on Kubernetes, you should use Helm and you should use Argo CD or Flux to do continuous delivery of changes to your Helm charts, which in turn deploy your applications for you as and when obviously they're updated and as they're changed. But I think that if you're going to do platform engineering, especially as a DevOps engineer, we should be getting out of the way of the developers and giving them everything they need to just simply deploy resources. So in the case of AWS, that means that if a developer needs an RDS instance, you just give them an RDS instance. You just get out of the way and you just give them the RDS instance or, or rather you give them the ability to deploy the RDS instance. The same with SQS and various other things. You can control what they can and can't do from a can they abuse this perspective by putting SCP policies in place and various other IAM boundaries and things like that. So you can protect yourself and you can protect your environment from abuse when you do this. But is it the right thing to do? In some cases, I think that there is an argument to be made for using still using Terraform to define those application dependencies. I call them hard dependencies because they're infrastructure and infrastructure doesn't move at the same cadence that software does. I'm going to cover that in another video. And so I think it's okay sometimes to use Terraform to do this, but I think it depends on the composition of your teams and your organization. So if you're, if you're a team of five people and you've got say two DevOps engineers and three programmers, everyone's probably just all mixing in. The two DevOps engineers are probably doing a bit of coding from time to time, and the developers are probably doing a bit of infrastructure. And so it's probably okay to use Terraform to build the infra, to get Kubernetes up and running, and then you just leave the infrastructure to Terraform and those developers will can probably work with that Terraform code base. But if you're in a very large team and the developers are in a, actually a completely separate team and their cadence is really fast and they, they just need to experiment very, very quickly, you sort of need to give them a frictionless experience so that they can deploy and build on that platform. So this is where I think controllers come into it. And this is where I think you should essentially just get out of the developer's way. So I personally will use controllers on a Kubernetes platform if I think it lets the developers just run and move quickly. And it means, frankly, that I have to do less work. I just have to set up the platform and set up the interfaces to work and be stable. But what do you think? Do you use AWS Kubernetes controllers or maybe controllers for your cloud provider, whether it's GCP or Azure? Please let me know in the comment below. I like to hear from you guys and girls and I like to learn from how you do things as well. So yeah, let me know.